From time to time, viewers ask us about record-breaking molecules, the biggest, the heaviest, the lightest, the smallest. I want to tell you about the heaviest possible molecule that you can have with five atoms. That molecule is organesson, element 118, tetratenoside, that is with four atoms of tenosine, element 117. Now, this is purely a theoretical exercise because although people have made atoms of organesson and tenosine, they've never made the atoms at the same time. Did you make organesson in this? Yes. Reactor. Yes, yes. In, in, in the, with this machine, with this side, sure. yeah. But there are really two quite interesting questions that you can tackle using computation. The first question is Will organesson actually react with tenosine? Xenon, which is next to iodine in the periodic table, doesn't react with. Iodine, so you can't get xenon tetraiodide, or at least nobody's isolated it, as far as I'm aware. So one question is, if you could make this molecule, would it be stable? Would there be bonds actually between the atoms, or would they fall apart? The second question, which chemists always ask, is what shape would the molecule be? Could it be a tetrahedron that's with four tenosines with the organesson in the middle? Could it be a square, again with the organesson in the middle, but with the four tenosines round it? Now, a recent paper tackles this problem computationally, and their computations have two different versions. One is a fairly straightforward computation, the other one considers so-called relativistic effects. Before we think about the calculations, few numbers. Methane, CH4, which is the lightest stable five-atom molecule, weighs 16 units. Organesson tetratenoside would weigh 1,470 units. That's about 92 times heavier, so it's quite big. If you add up all the electrons in this molecule, there are 586 electrons, which is a lot. And this is what makes the computational challenge so big. The other point is, when electrons travel very rapidly and their speed approaches the speed of light, they get much heavier. This is a consequence of Einstein's relativity theories. So, in the calculations, you can do two types of calculation. One type in which you ignore the relativity and ignore the fact that the electrons are traveling so fast around the nuclei of the atoms. And the other one in which you include relativistic effects. We had a video some time ago explaining how relativistic effects explain why the element mercury is a liquid when most other metals are solids. The upshot of these calculations is that without relativistic effects, organesson tetratenoside appears unstable. It wouldn't easily bond together. With relativistic effects, it is stable. Not enormously, but it could form. And the fact that you can get a compound of organesson and tenosine is really quite interesting. What shape is it? Well, if you asked inorganic chemists like me, they will say, well, xenon tetrachloride is a square like this. So we'd expect organesson tetratenoside to have the same shape. It turns out that these calculations suggest that it would be tetrahedral. That's not the shape that we might expect. You can ask, is this all very important? Doing a calculation about a molecule which is pretty unlikely ever to be made. And I would say, yes, it is important 
because it is showing how one can refine the computational techniques to get what we hope are better answers. Now, you might say that's just Martin's personal view, but in this journal here, they have 2021's dramatic digits in chemistry, and down here is 586, the number of electrons in organesson tetratenoside with a picture of the molecule. We've done plenty more videos about super heavy elements, including trips to Russia, the United States and Germany. There'll be links on the screen at the moment and also down in the video description.